Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my presentation will be very brief. I will focus on the method, the outcomes, and some gaps or challenges while uh, developing the hotspots for Nigeria. First, just an overview of cholera in Nigeria. Um, as we all know, Nigeria is one of the 47 countries that is still endemic for cholera. Uh, from the first case in 1970 to 1971 to date, we've been having cases of cholera, but notably we have had uh, four to five major outbreaks, and the last one being the 2018 cholera outbreak with over 40,000 cases and 836 uh, deaths. And this affected more than half of the states in Nigeria, where you have 36 states and the federal capital territory in Abuja. So the rationale for the hotspot basically is that targeting hotspot with proven intervention such as OCV is effective in reducing cholera body. So the cholera mapping was not done by NCDC alone. We worked with uh, other partners, such as the Nigeria Primary Health Care Development Agency, the World Health Organization, and I forgot to mention here, eHealth Africa. So most of the data source, or most of the data sets we used uh, were from the NCDC, uh, from routine data collected via the IDSR platform and line list, covering the period of 2012 to 2017. And the data, they were down to the local government level in Nigeria. So basically in Nigeria, we have three administrative levels, the federal level, the state level, and the local government level. Then the population data was from the National Population Commission, covering the same uh, period. So I found out this morning that the indicators were already discussed during the summary section. So briefly, uh, cholera body was used as a primary indicator, the frequency of cholera uh, outbreak. So this was like a binary uh, variable using two categories. Uh, so in terms of frequency, for a period of one to four years was given a score of one. The more than four years was given a score of two. Then contribution to first 50% of all reported cholera cases, also a binary variable. So it was a yes or no uh, category. The severity of cholera outbreak using case fatality ratio. So this was a categorical variable in that we had a score of one for zero percent case fatality ratio. The one, 0.1 percent to 10 percent was given a score of two, and more than 10 percent case fatality ratio was given a score of three. The wash conditions, um, also a categorical, no, a binary variable, uh, it was defined as when a, local, a population of a local government, at least 50% having access to portable water supply and being able to verify our wash activities in the local government area. So that was classified as satisfactory and given a score of one. Then the opposite unsatisfactory uh, score or category was given a score of two. The nature of settlement of the local government area was defined as a categorical variable. So we had the first uh, level being a predominantly host community. Then the other one, a mixture of host community and internally displaced persons. And the last level, predominantly internally displaced persons. So they were all given a score, the highest being for uh, predominantly um, eternally displaced people. Their ongoing transmission was also uh, used. So all these indicators were given uh, weight, the highest being um, nature of settlement, I think 20, 25, 
then the rest were given a weight of 10, then the scores and the weights were multiplied to give a total score. So 83 local government areas were classified as cholera hotspots from this assessment. And this local government area is home to 23 million people and they accounted for 84% of total cholera cases during this mapping period. Then we went for that, you know, in addition to this exercise to have like a stakeholder meeting to validate and prioritize the hotspot. So it's similar to what was done in Zambia. So it was participatory in that we invited both community uh, um, um, health workers and even the major uh, partners like WHO and primary health care development agency. So during this stakeholder meeting, we considered additional contextual factors or indicators. Uh, the three were actually security, susceptibility to flooding, and accessibility. So these were already mentioned this morning. So this resulted in the inclusion of uh, additional 13 hotspot local government areas. So overall, we had 96 local government areas from 15 states and classified as cholera hotspots. And using the same or uh, similar approach as the Zambia one, we grouped them or ranked them into these three categories. So you find out that the high priority uh, they're actually located in the northern part of the country, mostly in the northeastern part of the country and the northwest. The, the southern part of the country is kind of no, is it, kind of devoid of cholera or it's, it's not hot spots according to this ranking system. Challenges or what I would call gaps. There is the issue of uh, stability of the hotspot. We were thinking about this during this process, whether the, the hotspot will remain stable. So, um, currently, though we don't have, currently, though we don't have a cholera outbreak in Nigeria, but the few cases we are getting, or you know, if in Nigeria, they are actually coming from the southern part more from the southern part than the northern part. So there is this issue of the stability, how it should be addressed, and it's something we are hoping to address maybe during this meeting or uh, later on. Then the depth of local government area setting. So there was this use of micro hotspot by Andrew and colleagues where they were looking at the spatial temporal distribution of cholera. But in this context, we're actually looking at cholera in terms of within a local government area, given the limited supply of OCV, for example. If you declare or if you classify a local government area as a hotspot, where you have different uh, sectors like rural, peri-urban, and urban, the question would be, in that local government area, where do you focus on or where do you target for your vaccination or other intervention? So that is a source of concern. I will not really call it a challenge here. Then, of course, we had limited wash and socioeconomic data. Uh, they were not very much, but we had to make do with what we had. Then diagnostic accuracy, which we already discussed in the uh, lab uh, working group yesterday. So uh, in conclusion, uh, we believe that mapping uh, cholera hotspot in Nigeria was an important step towards attaining the global um, roadmap strategic goals. However, the identified gaps need to be addressed for optimal outcomes. I actually prepared these with the hope that I will present it during the first uh, meeting. I believe most of these issues have already been addressed. Okay, all right, thank you.